You are tuned in to Econoom TV, the unofficial broadcaster of economics for South African students. In today's episode, chapter 2, and we are having a closer look at the economic problem. This is part 1 of 3, and we're looking specifically at the question of what to produce. In chapter 1, we said that people have unlimited wants and needs, but resources are scarce, and that leads to choice. Once choices have been made, it means that there is opportunity cost, the value of the best alternative that you couldn't have. This analysis of scarcity, choice and opportunity cost leads to three important questions. What to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce. What to produce is about the goods and services that society produces. How relates to the questions of the methods of production. For whom is all about the distribution of goods and services and who in society gets to consume which goods and services. Finally, economic systems determine how society will answer these questions. Consumers use goods and services to satisfy their needs. It is possible to make a number of distinctions between different types of goods and services. For example, between consumer goods and capital goods. Consumer goods are used to satisfy needs, and there are many different categories. For example, non-durable goods, like food, which is consumed and then it's finished. Semi-durable goods can be consumed a few times over, like clothing, but it still gets worn out. The durable goods can be used many times over, but it's important to note that the durable goods should not be considered as an investment. Capital goods are used in the production of other goods and services. This would include different types of machinery used in the production process, but also society's capital goods, like highways and schools. Capital goods also get used up over time and suffers depreciation of value. It is also possible to distinguish between final and intermediary goods. Final goods are consumed by households and firms to satisfy their needs. The sandwich that you'll have at lunchtime is an example of a final good. Intermediary goods are inputs used in the production of other goods and services. So for the baker, the flour is an example of an intermediary input into the production of bread. Economists also distinguish between private and public goods. Private goods are consumed by households and firms and their distinguishing characteristic is that a private good can be owned. It also means that you have to pay a price in order to consume a private good. This can be a mule, clothing, a house for example. Public goods by contrast are consumed by society as a whole. No one is the single owner of a public good and it's difficult to price public goods. There are few examples of pure public goods. In textbook, you'll typically find the lighthouse mentioned as an example, where it shines its light and all ships can navigate by it. Similarly, the protection that the military service offers a country and its citizens is something that is consumed by society as a whole, and the public good is provided by government. You can also distinguish between economic goods and free or common goods. Economic goods are produced at a cost using scarce resources and they fetch a price in the market. You have to pay if you want to consume food, clothing or housing. Free goods or common goods, on the other hand, is not scarce and has no price. There are few examples of pure common goods. Those that you do find include fresh air, the oceans or a nice sunny day. All of them have no price associated with their consumption. Finally, you can distinguish between homogeneous goods and differentiated ones. Homogeneous are all exactly the same. And again, there are a few examples. Fine gold is almost the only pure example of an homogeneous good. The differentiated goods are the ones that we know and like. Consumers like variety. And when there are differences in quality and brand, It means that people can decide what they like better. So, for example, in the luxury car market, you'll find BMW, Mercedes and Volvo. They're all luxury cars, 
but they're all also slightly different, and consumers like these differences. In Chapter 1, we learned that the production possibilities curve presents the different combinations of two goods that society can produce if it's using all its resources efficiently. So, in the case of potatoes and fish, all these points, A, B, C, D, E, through to F, represents efficient production of different combinations of potatoes and fish. Points that fall outside the production possibilities curve, like for example, point G, is impossible to produce with current inputs and technology. Any point that falls inside the production possibilities curve represents inefficiency, and it's possible to produce more of either good without trading off the quantity of the other. Now suppose that we have this economy that can produce two types of goods, consumer and capital goods. How would the production possibilities curve change when productivity increases? On the original production possibilities curve A, B, you can start with any initial combination of consumer goods and capital goods. But if society wants to produce a greater amount of capital goods, it means that they will have to sacrifice some of the production of consumer goods. If, however, there is a change in production techniques, they somehow improve through technology or innovation, it could mean that it's possible to produce more capital goods while keeping the output of consumer goods the same. This moves the production possibilities curve to the right. Now there's a new frontier of efficient production of consumer and capital goods. The same would be true for an improvement in the techniques for producing consumer goods. The production possibilities curve moves upward and to the right, and society can afford to consume more consumer goods without sacrificing capital goods, or having more of both. Such an improvement in the productivity of available resources that moves the production possibilities curve towards the right is known as economic growth. Did we achieve the outcomes of this first part of the chapter? Can you describe the different categories of goods and services and give examples? Can you draw a production possibilities curve and show improvement in productivity and economic growth? For more information, have a look at Chapter 2 in Murenfuri. There are additional resources on Yafundi and you can answer the questions on quiz. Finally, follow at Yekonuam on Twitter.